Hello, I'm Ross Plasco, I work at Rive, and today we're going to be making a very simple and lightweight map widget that you can embed on your website. First things first, let's make a rectangle, and we're going to use this rectangle as the basic shape of the widget. Adjust the corner, and then we're going to make another rectangle and use this as the header part of the map. So I'll well, just uh, make this white and clip it to the rectangle. I'll call this one header and this one map shape. And I can use Rive's new feathering feature to add another fill. Drag this one above that one. Uh, change this to a solid blank and then add feather. Don't show me again and OK. So now you can see over here the black fill is feathered. We can adjust the feathering amount but I kind of like the default number 12. We can also offset this if we wanted, but I'm just going to leave it as it is so that we have a nice little shadow and we can add some text. So where am I? Change the color to black, change the anchor point to the center. Then we can move this around and move it to the center of the header. Cool, let's start animating. So press tab to go into animate mode. And we're going to have two timelines called one small and the other one big. So in small, we're going to set a keyframe for the text run. Then we're going to set a keyframe for the header Y position and the header size. And we're going to do the same thing for the map shape. Y position and size. So let's affect these keyframe values. Highlight them all, tap U, and I'm going to start playing around with these keyframes. We want the header to be kind of like the same size as the button. There we go. And now in the big timeline, we're going to do the same. We're going to set a keyframe here. Y position, size, and do the same on the map shape. Y position and size. These values are all great, except for this text run. So let's change this text run to here. So now we have our small timeline and we have our big timeline. Let's go into our state machine and set this up. By default, the first timeline is small. So let's drag big onto the stage and set a transition from small to big. And we're going to set the condition that this input Boolean has to be set to true. And to go in the other direction from big to small, the same boolean has to be set to false. So now if I press play and I change the boolean, then we switch back and forth between the two timelines. I can highlight the transitions, give them a duration of 500 milliseconds, and I can add some interpolation to that transition. So when I press play, there's a little bounce. Now I want to control this Boolean using a click. I want to be able to click on the header and that controls the Boolean. So how do we do this? Well, a listener. I'm going to listen to the header. And if I click my header, then I'm going to set the Boolean to toggle, which just means if the Boolean is false when I click, then we will toggle it to true. And if the Boolean is true when I click, then we will toggle it back to false. Now let's add our map. I have a little uh, screenshot of Google Maps and I'm just going to drag it into Rive. And now we can drag it onto our stage. I just want to compare it to the size of our stage. Uh, maybe I will scale it down a little bit because this size should give us a nice amount of scrolling. Then I'm going to 
tap Command G to group it. This is quite important because later on we're going to add a little bouncing location icon and it's going to have to be within the same group as the map. So make sure that you put your map into a group. Then I'm going to clip this group to the map shape. Call this group map group and drag it down below the header. And then with map group highlighted, tap Shift L and then Shift L again. This creates a layout and we just drag this so that it aligns with the top corner of your map shape. Then we can go to the right, add a constraint, a scroll content constraint, go into the settings, change the direction to all, tap away, press play, tap here and you'll see that you can scroll but from the starting point you can only really scroll down or to the right. Uh, how do we change this? How do we start in the center? Well it's pretty simple in the settings just set the scroll percent x to 50 and the scroll percent y to 50 as well. That should start you off at the halfway point. So now when I press play we start in the center of the map and we can scroll in any direction that we want. Now let's add a little location pin. Turn this red, add a little white circle. Group these two shapes, Command G, and call this Location Pin. Then open up our row and the layout within, and then we need to drag our Location Pin into our map group. Press play, and we have our button. We press it, we've got our Location Pin. We can move that around. We can collapse it and open it back up again. Hey, why don't we add a bit where if we collapse it, and open it up again, then our pin is in the center again. How do we do this? Well, we can set a keyframe for the scroll X percent and the scroll Y percent to be back at 50% each when we go back into our small timeline. So let's open the small timeline, tap row. Let's go to our scroll settings and set our percentage keyframes, 50% and 50%. This way, whenever we go back to small, the pin has gone back to the center. So if I move this and close it and open it back up, it's back in the center. You'll see it moving uh, because it's the animation is interpolated. So you'll see it quickly moving back to the center, which is fine. One last thing, I'm going to animate the location pin just bouncing up and down. I'm going to create a new state machine layer, call it location pin create a new timeline, just call it pin, make it a loop, back to design mode and I'm going to highlight the location pin, uh, tap Y and move the anchor point down to its bottom center, then back into animation mode and I'm going to animate the scale and Y position. Tap this, tap U so we can see the keyframes and I'm going to go forward uh, 15 frames, move it up, forward another 15 frames, copy and paste the first keyframe. Then highlight the first keyframe and we're going to change the easing to be an ease in, change the second one to be an ease out. That way it jumps in the air really quickly, slows down and then speeds up as it comes back down. Then I'm going to add another couple of little keyframes, move it up a little bit and copy and paste that so it has an extra quick bounce when it lands and that looks like that and to give it just a little bit more character i'm going to affect the scale at the end i'm going to create two scale keyframes move back a few frames and create two more then go to the end and squash this pin down and widen it then we can move forward from the beginning and just as it lands, let's elongate it, make it taller and make it skinnier. Then a couple frames later, squash it again and make it wider. And then at the end, just say 100 and 100. 
Let's see how this looks. There we go. Now it's got a little bit more character. Now we're almost done. Let's go to our state machine, drag pin onto our state machine layer, hook it up to entry and press play. We tap the button. Our pin is moving. We can drag it around wherever we want. And we can tap that button again. And when we open it back up, the pin is back in the center. So this is a fully functioning, production ready map widget that you can embed and use on your website. Thank <laughs> you.